Hi, everyone. Hi. Hey, everyone. Good morning. Hi. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Good morning. Welcome to Birmingham. Welcome to conference. As you know, I'm a Midland man. It's great to be back home in Birmingham. Thank you for being here. I think you've had a good weekend so far. How's conference been for you all? It's been good. It's been good. And what a contrast to the Labour Party conference the other day. That was a parade of the inadequate and the in unserious. Anyone says the grown-ups are back in charge in our country, just look at Ed Miliband. <laughs> and then you've got, you've got David Lammy, our foreign secretary. He's the one who went on Celebrity Mastermind and said that Henry VII succeeded Henry VIII. <laughs> He's not quite a celebrity, he's certainly not a mastermind. He keeps banging on about a ceasefire, and that's just between Sue Gray and Morgan McSweeney. Uh, and then you've got Angela Rayner. Look, the first three months of this Labour government, it's so bad that she had to go on holiday to Ibiza. And it's so bad she actually had to pay for her own holiday this time. <laughs> but seriously, we're here today because we've got to get these people out of government. We've got to rebuild our party. We've got to rebuild our country. That is the mission of this political party. Despite everything that's happened, despite all of our failings, our party remains our country's best hope. Thanks very much. Now, I, I joined this party. I joined this party age 16 in 1997 in Wolverhampton. There were not many 16-year-old conservatives in Wolverhampton in 1997. There are not many conservatives at Wolverhampton in 1997. <laughs> but this party has been my family ever since. I've been an association chairman. I've been a marginal seat candidate over in Stoke-on-Trent. I fought a by-election, which many of you helped me to win. And then I've been in Parliament for 10 years. This party is its members. And so one of the things I want to say to you today is we've got to return the party to the service of the membership. It's the end if I become the leader of this party, of the disrespect that CCHQ has shown to our members. Never again will the favored sons and daughters of the leader of the day be parachuted in to constituencies on shortlists of one. Never again will you receive emails from CCHQ asking for money and not asking for your views. I say enough. This party is going to be a mass membership democracy, democratic party once again. That is our mission. That is what we're going to do. That is what we're going to do together. I want to get young people back. I want to get young people back into this party. I want to ensure that when we choose candidates, you, the members, are in the driving seat. I want to campaign properly using the best techniques. Let's get back on social media. Let's reach over our left-leaning media and speak to the people of this country. Make them conservatives. Teach them conservative values. Persuade people to support our party once again. When the party said at the beginning of this process that you, the members, don't matter, that you should be cut out of choosing the next leader, I said no. When CCHQ said that this great task of choosing the next leader is so immaterial that the candidate should just do cursory 10-minute speeches, I said no. I want this to be a proper debate. Let's debate ideas. Let's make conference the crucible of conservatism. Let this, make this a cauldron of ideas and energy and discussion. That is the Conservative Party that I joined age 16 in 1997. It's the Conservative Party I believe in today. It's the Conservative Party I want to lead. And, and friends, and friends, there are many big challenges facing our country but one which I believe is existential to our party and critical to the future of our country is our membership of the European Convention on Human Rights. Look, I think that this issue is going to be one of the central concerns of our country and many others across Europe in the years ahead. Our continued membership of the European Convention on Human Rights is making it impossible for us to deport terrorists who are here walking our streets to remove dangerous foreign criminals like rapists and murderers and paedophiles who we need to get out of our country to protect the public. It is making it impossible to secure our borders, which is the first duty of the British state. And it is making it impossible for us 
to finish the job we began with Brexit, which is to restore sovereignty to our people and our parliament. That's what we need to do. Now look, it didn't have to be this way. We, Britain, our country, we were the jurists, we were the authors of this great document that emerged in the aftermath of the Second World War, the horrors of the Holocaust, the tyranny of Stalin in Russia, the millions of our fellow European friends and neighbors who were on the move. But this document, a noble document, has been twisted and bent out of all shape by activist judges, by charities and NGOs who sought to misuse it from the 1970s onwards. Churchill, friends, would turn in his grave if he saw what had happened to this document today. Churchill wanted us to defend the right to family life, not the right for terrorists to remain in our country, on our streets, terrorizing British citizens. This needs to end. This needs to end. I will not allow this to continue. Let me give you some examples. There are foreign, there are foreign criminals, literally on our streets, who we need to get out, who we cannot get out, because of the European Convention on Human Rights. Just last month, we learned that a Ugandan criminal had literally clubbed someone to death in the back of an ambulance and then was not able to be removed from our country because under the ECHR, it was deemed that the mental health provision in Uganda was insufficient to remove this individual from our country. That is absurd, but it is also shameful. I am not prepared to put our citizens at risk any longer. And then there are dozens of terrorists in our prisons, on our streets, because of our continued membership of the ECHR. Let me give you an example. Wabi Mohammed, a Somali terrorist who in the aftermath of the 7-7 bombings plotted to blow up hundreds of our fellow citizens on trains in London. He planted four bombs. They didn't go off properly. Fortunately, people's lives were saved. He was sentenced to 17 years in prison. Of course, he was released halfway through his sentence. The government rightly tried to get this dangerous man out of our country. We were not able to because of the European Convention on Human Rights. And so friends, this man is on our streets right now. And you are paying for him to be monitored by our security services day and night for years to come. That is shameful. I am not prepared to subject the British people to that any longer. And as we know, as we know, as we know, as we know it has proven to be impossible to secure our borders whilst we remain within the European Convention on Human Rights. It was one of the principal reasons that the Supreme Court gave for blocking our Rwanda policy. When I wanted to strengthen the policy, the court blocked it and Starmer has scrapped it. And it was because of the European Convention on Human Rights. We live in an age of mass migration. There are millions of people on the move looking to come to our great country. We have to tackle this issue. We will never, never tackle it whilst we remain within the European Convention on Human Rights. It creates an arsenal of laws by which illegal migrants can frustrate their removal, a merry-go-round of legal cases costing you millions, costing you billions in hotels, and preventing us from doing what the public want, which is to secure our borders. We've got to bring this farce to an end once and for all. And there's even more than this. There's even more than this. As one of our greatest living jurists, Jonathan Sumption, has said, the court is not even a court anymore. It is making laws now. Laws that you and I never voted for, laws that you and I don't want. It is saying that our special forces, when they're risking their lives for our safety overseas, have to temper their actions for fear of the consequences in the European court. It's saying that when a mob tears down a statue of Edward Colston on the streets of Bristol, they can claim that they have a right to protest and to commit criminal damage on our streets. And it's now saying, in the latest absurdity, that in Switzerland, a democratic referendum can be overturned on net zero because the court has now decided it, in its wisdom, 
should set our environmental, our industrial, our net zero policy as an entire European continent. This is wrong. We Conservatives believe in the sovereignty of our Parliament and our people. That is what we've begun with Brexit. Let's finish the job. That is what I want to do. So, so there are those people. I respect other people's views. I respect there's a legitimate debate on this issue. I am not in favour of banging on about Europe. What I want to do, I want to do to coin a phrase from our former Prime Minister. I want to get migration done. I want to settle this running sore that is taking up the oxygen in our political life today so that all of us in this party and our country can get on to talk about all the other things that drove me into politics and drive all of us in public life. The environment, education, the health service, the economy, the other issues that dominate and determine the future of our country. But if we don't tackle this issue together, we will continue to talk about this year after year. Our people will continue to be subject to these harms year after year. I'm not willing to do that. Now, there are those. There are those in our party and beyond who say, let's ignore the European court. You can't do that. We are a nation of common law. There are those who say we should derogate from the court. You can't do that. The convention specifically says that can only happen in the most limited circumstances where there is a threat to the life of the nation. And even then, it doesn't apply to Articles 2, 3, and 4, the very ones which most immigration cases depend on. That's not going to happen. There are those who say we should reform the European Court. That would require unanimity of 46 member states. That's a fantasy. It is as doomed to fail as David Cameron's well-intentioned attempt to renegotiate our membership of the EU. But that took a couple of years. This would take decades and then end in failure. Well, I don't know about you, but my constituents in Nottinghamshire, who I spoke to day after day during the general election, they're not prepared to wait. They don't want to mess around. They want to secure our borders. They want to walk safely on our streets. We, as a Conservative Party, need to tackle this issue. If we are the serious party of British politics, let's have the serious answers to the serious challenges. Let's get on and do this job for the British people. So, so it boils down to this. It boils down to this. It's leave or remain. Remain means subject our people and our country to dangerous criminals on our streets, to terrorists on our streets, to a court creeping into every aspect of our lives without any democratic accountability. And it means that we never secure our borders. Leave means end this farce once and for all. I'm for leave. I'm for leave. And it's more than that. It's more than that, friends. For our party, this is more than just leave or remain. Frankly, our party doesn't have a future unless we take a stand and fix this problem. It's leave or die for our party. I'm for leave. I'm for leave. I'm for fixing this problem, for moving forward with confidence, face turned to the future. That conference is what I want to do. Let's make this day, let's make this conference the crucible of conservatism. Let's use this opportunity to settle this issue once and for all, and for our party to have the answer to one of the biggest challenges facing our country. Let's leave the ECHR and let's get this done. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Have a great day at conference, everyone. See you soon. Thank you.